This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Brothers, know when to cut the children off, especially these grown children. Know when to cut them off. Now, if they're under 18, man, do what you can, man, to provide, protect, teach. But even in those situations, man, they can cause a lot of mess in your life if you're not with the mom, even sometimes if you are with the mom. But more so when you're not with the mom and they're getting information fed to them, uh, one parent's playing on their emotions. They can bring a lot of chaos to your life, cause a lot of mess, man. But especially when these kids, these children are grown and they're causing disruption, chaos, uh, bitterness in your life, bringing pain in your life, you got to know when to cut them off. Now, everyone has their own threshold of pain or discomfort they can take. And you got to know your threshold and and weigh it out what's worth it and where you what, what are you losing by staying connected with this with this child that's causing so much mess to each his own right so this topic came uh to mind because i'm looking at two brothers that are going through it so to speak because one brother is deceased the late great comedian bernie mac one is living I had an aneurysm about a year ago the uh, the great producer and rapper, Dr. Dre. Now, Bernie Mac's daughter, Janice McCullough, just came out with a statement to a publication on Bernie Mac's 13th anniversary of his passing. And uh, out of her own mouth, she said she felt a need to let the people know that her father's on-screen persona as a parent did not resemble his off-screen parenting skills. She said he was a, a, a horrible uh, parent. And, uh, she told a story uh, of when she had gotten into a situation with a young boy. Uh, I guess she was in elementary. The young man, the young boy hit her. She came home crying. Bernie Mac, I guess the next day, took a walk into the bus stop, <clears throat> got on the bus, reprimanded the young man, got off. They're walking back to the apartment. He asked her, so when this young man hit you, what did you do? She said, nothing. He begins to turn to her and tell her, hey, don't let anyone, you know, misuse you, hit you. Uh, called her, he, she says, he called her weak and soft and that she needed to toughen up. <clears throat> I see nothing wrong with that. Uh, I think everyone <clears throat> should have the right to defend themselves and should defend themselves if uh, they're being harmed, physically harmed. Uh, see nothing wrong with that. And then also we got to look into, look at what, era Bernie Mac grew up in. You know, Bernie died, I believe he was 50, this 13 years ago. So he would have been 63, I'm 45. So he's a generation removed uh, from me. Uh, I know how I grew up and that's how we grew up uh, to defend yourselves and, and fight back. So, you know, you know, as generations go on, they get softer, so to speak. So, hey, they really live by that, by that rule. Uh, when Bernie Mac was growing up. And so I totally understand and I agree. Now, was his delivery rough? Probably. But, you know, I looked at a documentary on Bernie a few years ago and, and Bernie grew up tough, grew up rough. And so that's Bernie. Uh, no one's perfect though. And, and fellas, that's the bar <clears throat> with us. Uh, we gotta be perfect, man. People would nitpick what you do wrong, what you don't do well as a parent or as a father, as a man, where it's not nitpick with women, you know, uh, they get away with a lot. And it is what it is. You, you know, you can't cry about it. It is what it is, <clears throat> but it's good to bring it to light. But fellas, you know, don't get so wrapped up into your children to where you lose focus and you start having resentment and hurt because you don't get the same passes and you don't get the same love or expression of love that
that the mom gets. It is what it is, man. But that's one reason my boy, Mr. Palmer says, you got to keep those veins ice cold. Because a lot of times, man, these children can flip on you in a heartbeat if you tell them no or if you don't give them what you what they want or if they don't like uh, how you're expressing yourself, how they don't like your delivery. And Bernie is a guy that raised his daughter from birth until he was in her life until he died, you know? Uh, so she felt the need to dim his light, to uh, chip at the persona or the thought people have about Bernie Mac, Bernie Mac. And so only she knows the true reason why she did that. But if she was a wise person, she would look at the broader picture and say, you know what? Maybe I didn't agree with my father, my father's parenting skills. Maybe he wasn't as affectionate as I wanted, but he gave me a life many dream of. You know, I never had to worry about food being on the table or a roof being over my head. I had the best of schools, right? I had exposure to a lifestyle and different experiences and different cultures because of my dad's gifts, discipline, and talent. Seems logical to me. But that's the thing, man. A lot of these kids, they don't think logically. They think with emotion. And we know what, what's that, what, that, what that is about. But uh, that's why it's important for a man to stay balanced. It's so important because if you go up and down with the emotions of a woman or a child, man, you will be out of whack. You will literally drive yourself crazy. So, man, you got to be steady, be focused, be reliable, and sometimes you got to be ice cold. You got to be matter of fact and remove your emotions because you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Now, we're going to take it to Dr. Dre. <clears throat> Dr. Dre, his daughter, just came out, tried to shame him. I say extort, bully. Uh him into providing for her financially. Now, uh, at her own admission, Dr. Dre has was providing for her financially, paying all her bills, and even gave her an allowance each month or each week up until January of 2020. And he cut that off because she went to the media when he was in the hospital due to his aneurysm, and she spoke negatively about him. So he cut her off. She's been trying to get in touch with him through his lawyers, but he ain't hearing it. He's done. He's done. Look at her, man. Look at her, messed up. Messed up. And so now she's saying she's homeless. She got four kids, living in and out of her car, staying with friends and relatives here and there. And now she's saying her dad should be providing for her, a grown woman with four kids. You see that? You see that, man? As soon as you say no, they want to dog you out, dog your name, dirty your name. As soon as you say no, as soon as they don't agree with something, they dog you out, right? That's because they see you as a resource. You got Bernie Mac, who raised his daughter. You got Dr. Dre, who didn't necessarily raise his daughter, but he provided financially. Uh, looking back on some things, there was some conflict with he and the mom Back in the day, she accused him of domestic violence. Is it true? Is it not? Who knows? We do know at the young lady's own admission that her father was providing financially until January 2020. And he only stopped because she went to the media. Why would she do that? Why would she do that? Did she think he was going to die? She wanted one last dig to expose him? Why did Bernie Mac's daughter do that to him on the 13th anniversary of his passing? One last dig to expose him? Why? Why? Why can't the black man, why can't a man, period, be the hero? You know, why do you have to tear down that veil? Why do you have to expose him, remove the curtain? But the woman is uplifted. A lot of her secrets, a lot of her uh, downfalls, a lot of her mishaps and weaknesses are hidden that we'll never know about. Never know about, man. But uh, 
the man is exposed. And these are two men that provided, at the least provided. At least one man raised his daughter. Doesn't matter though. He, he's boxed in with Dre. It's crazy, man. It's crazy when you, when you look at it. Now, man, these are two brothers who reached the highest, the highest level in their profession, in their art. That's hard. That's challenging to be disciplined, to be that good, and then to be disciplined enough to hone your skills, stay focused, uh, endure the battle wounds, endure rejection, and still reach the pinnacle of your profession and to gain riches and prominence and to be able to provide for your children and your family. And then these kids come back to dirty your name, to try to tarnish your legacy. Man, that's some cold-blooded stuff, man. And uh, I mentioned in the book that I don't believe in falling in love. And a lot of brothers are in love with their children. And I was one of those guys too. And I had to really refocus myself, man. Uh, nothing should come before your purpose, your God-given purpose, nothing. And I was caught up in that. I was one of those brothers that was very much so in love with my children. And that thing came back to burn me. But I'm glad I learned that lesson when I did uh, you know, Shane Burning, his name's been dirty while he's in the grave. And uh, Dr. Dre at the time had suffered an aneurysm. He was in the hospital. We didn't know that brother was going to survive or not. His daughter goes to the media dogging him out. And that's when she was cut off. I'm sure his, his lawyers or someone uh, notified him when he got well uh, and cut him off, cut, cut her off. And now she's complaining and trying to shame him. It's sad, man. You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. Uh, that's happened to one of my brothers. Raised, raised his daughter. And uh, she gets grown. Uh, you know, and uh, he and her mom had divorced. And she just goes in one day as a grown woman about how he wasn't there. Man, his brother almost snapped. He was like, what? I wasn't there. He almost snapped, man. Had to grab him. That's how hurt he was. Like, do you have amnesia? Like, what do you mean I wasn't there? So yeah, they had to grab him, man. It was, it was. I wasn't there. The story he told me, and uh, he said he was hurt, and I had to tell him. I said, hey man, can't be shocked. The woman gets the last word. She has more influence in these kids' heads. It takes a different kind of child, a mentally strong child to be objective and look at things with a 360 view and look at things through the eyes of a wise person. So uh, there's very few that can do that. But for the most part, the mom has the most influence on the child. And brother, that's why it's so, so important uh, selecting the right woman to procreate with because uh, Brothers, you don't know what your kids are being fed. Whether you're in the house or not in the house. Real talk, man. Real talk. Um, man, I dated this, this young lady. And uh, we started getting serious years ago, years ago. And I told her son something, man. Um, I can't remember so long ago, but it was a, it was a no to something. And in my face, she backed me up on it. Right. But, uh, later they went to his room, whatever, and I could overhear her telling him, uh, I'll get it for you. I'll just wait. We'll wait. We'll wait till he leaves or something. I'll get it for you. I said, wow. <laughs> wow. So, not only is that silly of her, betrayal of her, but man, what, what are you instilling in that kid? 
Like that's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So you know, um, that's a whole other topic, though. Like, should you date women with kids? And um, yeah, that's a whole different topic that I'm gonna dive into one day, cause that can be tricky. But yeah, brothers, keep your veins ice cold. Hey, man, be ready to love and be ready to cut it off. Don't get so wrapped up in them, man, because no one's going to take care of you and look out for you, your sanity like you. Take care of yourself first. Make sure you're well first. All right? From me to you, as always, love. Peace.